This is a rewrite of a video I made a couple months ago. I will link it in the description if you are interested. So as you may or may not have figured out, gear in Robeats is confusing and there is a lot going on. I'm assuming the in-game tutorial about gear is simply not enough. As I have played Robeats for several years at this point, I will do my best to explain everything I know about gear in Robeats because people look up to me for some reason. I think I should start off explaining what gear is and how it functions in the first place. Gear pieces are items you can equip onto your character to boost your score when playing in compete mode. They have no effect in casual mode as casual mode disables gear. Gear pieces are sorted into six types of slots, which are hat, neck, face, shirt, back, and pants. Only one item for each slot can be equipped, so you can't equip two hat accessories at once, for example. You may also notice there are also slots for three different minis. I will go over these in a bit. But I'll now explain how gear can be obtained. The most obvious location is the gear shop, which randomly sells two gear pieces that can be purchased with coins, two gear pieces that can be purchased with stars, and a random blueprint. I would avoid purchasing the blueprint as they are simply never worth the stars and you are better off trading for them in the marketplace. Additionally, there are also legendary versions of every blueprint that can be obtained from weekly leaderboards that are a direct upgrade to the rare versions, but I'll explain this later. The gear shop is fine for starting out, but all the gear sold in the gear shop becomes obsolete once you start getting better pieces, which I'll now discuss. The second way gear can be obtained is through crafting. This is also where the blueprints mentioned earlier are used, but there are also some legendary gear that can only be obtained by crafting. But you probably won't see any option to craft the piece or view the recipe for it. This is because every recipe is hidden unless you have a blueprint for the piece or an item called tokens. I will go into detail about how they are obtained later, but these tokens come in brass, silver and gold, and they can be used to craft certain legendary sets. They are also used for some legendary blueprint recipes, but you still need the blueprint to view the recipe. For example, if you own the blueprint for a legendary chill hat, you will see the recipe for the legendary chill hat as well as have the option to craft it once you have everything. Oh, and the recipe disappears once you no longer have the blueprint in your inventory, either by crafting the piece or trading the blueprint. Likewise, if you have at least one silver token in your inventory, you will see the recipes for a full gear set that can be crafted with large quantities of silver tokens. However, you won't see the recipe for blueprint items that require silver tokens, like the legendary chill pants. This entire section is probably a giant mess, but basically some rare and powerful gear require materials to craft them before you can obtain them. This is also how the beginner boombox can be crafted, but you can only own one of them and must delete it before you can obtain other colours of boomboxes. Some gear can also be obtained from events that happen weekly within Robeats, but there is a good chance most events have nothing gear related besides a mini. Finally, most gear pieces can also be obtained from the leaderboard ticket shop, which is only accessible if you have at least one ticket in your inventory. These tickets can be attained by participating in the weekly leaderboards with higher scores receiving more tickets. They can also be attained from weekly mission leaderboards and team leaderboard rewards, but they aren't in large quantities. Leaderboard tickets can be used to purchase both blueprints and gear pieces. It is also the only way most tier 3 gear pieces can be obtained. Alongside leaderboard tickets, the weekly leaderboards also reward blueprints and other resources that can be used to craft and upgrade gear, including note and gem boxes, mini boxes, token boxes, and upgrade boosts. Ranking 200th or higher will upgrade the rare blueprint to legendary and changes the 1 star mini box to a 2 star mini box. The mini boxes choose a mini at random, but the note, token and gem boxes allow you to choose what colour you want the items to be. Oh and there are also minis, which can be attained from artist events, weekly leaderboards and trading. Do note that mini boxes give you a random mini, so it is highly unlikely you'll get a mini you want, let alone a good mini. I should also mention here that if you buy a mini from the marketplace, or open a tradable copy of the mini box, the mini will not automatically appear in your gear inventory. 
Instead, it will appear as a sealed copy in your crafting inventory that you'll have to open to get the many. It is very likely that trading and using the marketplace will be your best friend throughout your experience of crafting and upgrading gear. It is highly unlikely you'll get the items you want on your own. You may want to ask around the community for values of different items or simply observe marketplace sales to get a rough idea of the values of every item. Now that I have explained how gear is obtained, I will explain what gear does precisely. Gear pieces will typically boost two different types of stats. Base stats and colored stats. Base stats are the statistics that affect your score on any song you play. They include perfect points, combo multiplier, fever fill rate, fever multiplier, fever time, and perfect time. The effectiveness of each base stat slowly diminishes as you add more upgrades, but I'll discuss this later. Perfect points are the amount of points you will score when hitting a perfect during a match. Rates, okays, and misses are unaffected by this. I will now present a graph that shows how upgrading perfect points scales as more upgrades are done, but I should explain how the graph works real quick since I'll also be using this for every base stat. The horizontal axis represents the amount of times the statistic has been upgraded, which in the gear menu is this number to the right. The vertical axis represents the points or multiplier of the upgrade, which is this number in the menu. So with that explained, we can see that the graph shows slowly diminishing returns with every upgrade, as it starts to slow down after about 40 upgrades, really slows down after about 75 upgrades, and does no improvement after 160 upgrades. Perfect points is arguably the least impactful base upgrade, because once you start getting into teams, you will realise that the weekly team contribution buff boosts perfect points. When upgrading sets focused on one element, you can skip this stat entirely as elemental points will be better in every situation, but I will go over those later. Combo multiplier refers to how much your score is multiplied after achieving a streak of 100 combo in a match. This is visible even in casual mode as you will start off with 200 points per perfect hit but once you get 100 or more combo, it becomes 400 points per perfect hit. In terms of upgrades, it doesn't have very high returns in general, as it starts to lose effectiveness after about 27 upgrades, and almost entirely stops showing improvement after about 76 upgrades. While combo multiplier is necessary to a degree, it is also not necessary to upgrade as a lot of gear pieces and minis include combo multiplier as part of their base stats, and it often isn't a small amount of combo multiplier either, it's a lot. Fever fill rate refers to how fast the fever bar fills after you hit a note. This depends entirely on the amount of notes a song has, so some songs will have faster fill rates than others. Greats and OKs will also slightly delay how fast the fever bar fills. In terms of upgrading, a smaller stat is better. It starts to lose effectiveness after about 34 upgrades and starts to really slow down after about 76 upgrades. Fever multiplier is similar to combo multiplier but only applies to fever and it doesn't scale like combo multiplier does. Fever multiplier stays the same regardless of combo. It works by multiplying your score without fever by your fever multiplier. In terms of upgrading, it starts to lose effectiveness at around 40 upgrades and almost entirely loses effectiveness after 75 upgrades. Fever time refers to how long fever mode lasts after it is filled up. Unlike fever fill that is dependent on how many notes there are in a song, fever time is dependent on the length of the song. Upgrading fever time seems to show better returns, with it starting to lose effectiveness after 40 upgrades and it becoming almost obsolete after about 73 upgrades. My suggestion is to keep fever fill and fever time somewhat the same. Because you will be able to activate fever mode at least twice during a song most of the time, the second fever should end at around the same time the song does. Too much fever fill may result in some of the bar being filled up after a match, meaning you have wasted fever fill and not fully utilised fever time, whereas having too much fever time may result in you still being in fever after the song ends, resulting in wasted fever time. There are some gear builds that use more fever fill and less fever time to activate fever three times in one song, mostly sets that focus on the vibe element. 
Oh, and there is also perfect time, which increases the timing window to get a perfect note hit. But this upgrade can be disregarded as upgrading perfect time comes with a demerit of lowering your base stats that actually affect score, which are perfect points and combo multiplier depending on whether you upgrade with notes or gems. But I will also show how perfect time scales with gear upgrades. It starts to become less powerful after 35 upgrades, equivalent to about 171 milliseconds of perfect time, and almost flat lines after about 78 upgrades, equivalent to 220 milliseconds of perfect time. The amount of points you get per perfect note hit can be calculated using this formula on songs with one element, and this formula on songs with two elements. Do note that it isn't exact because the game uses hidden decimals for every statistic and rounds everything to two decimal places. Now I will explain colour stats. Colour stats, or elemental points, are points that come with every gear piece and upgrade. They are your chill, vibe, beat, flow, and rush points. Unlike base stats that work on any song, elemental points only work on songs that have that element. For example, since Insight is a vibe chill song, only vibe and chill points will apply to this song meaning any beat, flow, and rush point upgrades will do nothing. Unlike base stats, upgrading colour stats has no diminishing effects. They will always scale additively. Base stats simply help them become more effective. Additionally, colour points also work during great and okay node hits. Not too necessary, but it does help for people who have a skill issue like myself. The stats of all your gear can be seen in the gear menu, and clicking on individual pieces allows you to see the upgrades done to the piece as well as its stats. I might as well also explain how the rest of the gear menu is navigated. The loadouts at the top left allow you to select up to 5 different gear loadouts. This basically functions as a quick equip for multiple pieces at once, but the game will use these loadouts if you have the auto equip best loadout setting enabled in the matchmaking menu. The plus button allows you to purchase up to 10 more additional loadouts, but these get expensive very fast, as the first loadout starts at 50 stars and increases by 50 with each upgrade. The question mark button allows you to rename each loadout. The auto equip button equips whatever the game thinks are the best pieces for the elements you choose. The buy button redirects you to the gear shop. The upgrade button redirects you to the gear upgrades menu, which I'll explain in a bit. The edit upgrades button allows you to consume upgrade cleaners to remove upgrades from gear pieces. Upgrade cleaners are relatively easy to get, and they can be crafted in the craft materials menu for 5 medium notes of the same colour. The trash button allows you to delete gear from your inventory. You can't delete pieces you have equipped. The top right part of the menu shows all the unequipped gear pieces and minis you own. They can be sorted by gear power, slot, or colour. Additionally, you can also filter gear pieces to show only the pieces with a certain term in the name, the slot, oh jeez, those are some beautiful and crisp images and colour. There is also a limit to the amount of gear pieces you can have in your inventory, which can be expanded up to 100 with stars, but it gets very expensive as it starts from 50 stars, but doubles with each upgrade. While there is no limit to the amount of minis you can store, you can only own and equip one type of each mini. I will now explain how gear can be improved. Gear pieces can be upgraded in the craft menu under gear upgrades, and here you will see a lot of options. However, you can skip the options that show one plus symbol instead of two. Upgrading with notes is not as impactful as upgrading with gems, and this matters because there is a limit of 15 upgrades you can do to each piece, and upgrades become more expensive as you add more. I can't even recommend upgrading Fever Fill or Time with Notes because I have asked two people I believe to be experts in gears and sniping people on weekly leaderboards and they have both said no. After the first five upgrades, upgrades become chance based and you have to start using items called Upgrade Boosts and Upgrade Protects. Upgrade Protects are used to prevent every upgrade after the fifth upgrade from resetting if the upgrade fails, which is necessary because if the upgrade fails and you don't use protection, you lose all your upgrades after the fifth upgrade. Upgrade boosts can be used to boost the chances of an upgrade succeeding. Up to five at a time can be used per upgrade, and failed upgrades with boosts slightly increases the odds of the next upgrade succeeding. However, it has to be the same upgrade, as the pity will not carry over to a different upgrade. 
For example, if you fail an upgrade using beat points with boosts, you will only have the pity if you continue upgrading with beat points. If you change the upgrade to something else such as Fever Multiplier, the pity doesn't carry over. Additionally, the more upgrades a piece has, the smaller the chance of it succeeding is, even with boosts. This is a table that shows the odds of an upgrade succeeding with varying numbers of boosts and without pity. Gems, upgrade protects, and upgrade boosts can be obtained from the note machine, trading, or from the weekly leaderboards. Alternatively, you can just buy everything from the Robux shop and be done. I will also explain how many's can be improved. They can be improved passively by playing songs, but they don't have very good EXP gains, and you can feed minis, notes, and gems of the same colours corresponding to its elements. You can also feed the mini blueprints and other minis with an increased EXP boost if you feed it copies of the same mini. I will attach a table showing the amount of resources you will need to level up minis between levels, as well as ranking them up. Once your mini reaches level 20, 30, or 40, it will be unable to gain more EXP, and you'll have to rank it up by using sealed copies of minis with the same elements as the mini you are ranking up. More points are given if you are using copies of the same mini while ranking up. Minis cap at level 50 and cannot be leveled up or ranked further. Compared to their level 1 counterparts, they'll have 5 times more elemental points and 4 times more base stats. I might as well use this section of the video to discuss a relatively popular resource for gear making, which is the Bowbeats Gear Meta Google document created by 4044 on Discord. It basically shows the best loadout for each element in most situations, as well as the best loadout if you are on a budget, and the best overall meta for every element. It also includes various resources for really astute people who want to devote all their free time into figuring out math for a silly pay-to-win rhythm game on Roblox. I will explain how to read one of the metas since there is a lot to take in. The colour of the text represents the element the set will be boosting. In this case, I will be using Flow. The items in brackets are the minis the set uses, and you have to assume these are level 50. The I in square brackets is a redirect to a spreadsheet that showcases every mini and their stats. The line below represents the pieces the set uses, and if it says Rest Legend, followed by an element, it implies you should use legendary pieces for the aforementioned element. For example, it says you should use the legendary Beatneck and no scope played out, so Rest Legend Flow would mean to use the legendary Flow Commander Hat, Face, Shirt, and Pants. Now we move on to upgrades, and there is also quite a bit to take in. The first number you see to the left of the statistic is the number that should appear as a stat in the gear menu. The second number that mentioned as an upgrade tells you how many times you should use that upgrade unless the stat is mentioned as base, which means it should be left unupgraded. The third number is the number that should appear here, which indicates how much that statistic has been improved. The final line below all the stats should say rest element name, which implies that the remaining upgrades after the base stat upgrades should be used on colour upgrades. The paragraph below the upgrades shows the amount of points you should score per perfect note hit during Fever. There is a number for those who are not in a team, and those who are in a team that ranks within the top 5 on the weekly leaderboard and chooses to boost the element corresponding to the set. The Fever overall and Fever flexibility are mainly for really, really astute people, but I think it assesses how much you can change the fever fill and time in a set to match a specific song. Unless your set is maxed and you are looking to get first place on a weekly leaderboard song, which I would assume is none of you if you are watching this, I would ignore this. And with that, I think I am done explaining what there is to gear in Robeats. If you have further questions or queries, you may comment them below. But besides that, I thank you for watching.